According to Patrick Lencioni, the author of numerous best-selling business fables, including The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, the biggest opportunity for competitive advantage is not about strategy, finance, or marketing. It's about how we manage our organizations. It's about context, integration, and practicality. Join us for the next 10 minutes or so to find out how we, too, can take that advantage. Lesson number one, Organizational Health 101. Here's Lencioni's mantra. The single greatest advantage any company can achieve is organizational health. Yet evidence suggests it's ignored by most leaders, even though it is simple, free, and available to anyone who wants it. Why? Because most leaders believe they are too sophisticated, too busy, or too analytical to bother with it. They suffer from unjustified biases. To some, organizational health is so simple and accessible that they don't see it as an advantage. Others are in too much of a hurry to succeed that they lose interest in it because it takes too long. Organizational health just isn't a sexy topic, but Lencioni believes otherwise. Let's look at the benefits. A healthy organization is whole, consistent, and complete. Its management, operations, strategy, and culture all have come together. Healthy organizations can be recognized by their lack of internal politics, high staff morale, great productivity, and low staff turnover. Leaders of healthy organizations don't rely on how smart they are. They know there are things that they don't know. Health trumps hubris. Lencioni suggests that to gain organizational health, we need to follow four disciplines which we will cover in the remainder of this summary. They are, number one, build a cohesive leadership. Number two, create clarity. Number three, over-communicate clarity. And number four, reinforce clarity. Lesson two, building a cohesive leadership team. What do we mean by cohesive? Fundamentally, Lencioni believes that if an organization is not led by a team that is behaviorally unified, there is no chance that it will become healthy. A cohesive team spends many hours working together on issues and topics that don't fall into their area of responsibility. Marketing doesn't just stick to marketing. IT does not just stick to IT. They share and support each other beyond their day jobs. This all depends on mutual trust. Cohesive teams trust each other so well that they open up their vulnerabilities to one another. They are willing to openly admit their weaknesses to the team in an honest belief that the team will help them overcome by playing to each other's strengths. Cohesive teams have strong emotional intelligence which they use to advantage. Within cohesive teams, conflict is welcomed. Not angry, regretful conflict, but conflict in a way where assumptions are openly challenged if a team member feels they're not quite right. Based on the team's mutual trust, conflict becomes nothing more than the pursuit of truth and an attempt to find the best possible answer. Cohesive teams argue to agreement. When leadership teams wait for consensus before taking action, they usually end up with decisions that are made too late and are mildly disagreeable with everyone a recipe for mediocrity and frustration. What Lencioni proposes is we adopt Intel's disagree and commit philosophy. When people can't come to an agreement around an issue, they must still leave the room with an unambiguous commitment to a common course of action. The cohesive team works together to attempt to reach consensus, but if it can't, then everyone, doubters or not, must buy in. Cohesive teams need to be accountable, and not just to meeting KPIs. A cohesive leadership team needs to be behaviorally accountable. If someone steps over the line of what is acceptable, then they need to be challenged and brought back to the common aim. In these cases, there is likely to be some discomfort. But in the end, the level of cohesion among members of the team and the associated trust will overcome. The ultimate point of building greater trust, conflict, commitment, and accountability is the achievement of results. As Lencioni says, No matter how good a leadership team feels about itself and how noble its mission might be, if the organization it leads rarely achieves its goals, then, by definition, it's simply not a good team. Great teams ensure all members are doing what they can to achieve the common goal. This means challenge, conflict, realignment, and other remedial actions underpinned by cohesiveness. We've spent a good amount of time on this first discipline, but without it, the other three will not bear fruit. 
Now let's take each of them in progression. Lesson number three, create clarity. Creating clarity is all about achieving alignment. Within the context of making an organization healthy, it's about creating so much clarity that there is little room for confusion, disorder, and infighting. All too often, leaders underestimate the impact of even subtle misalignment at the top and the damage caused by small gaps in the members of the executive team. So how have organizations tried to achieve clarity? Achieving much less than hoped, corporate mission statements have become a common vehicle. Woolly statements containing corporate buzz phrases are prevalent throughout business, but in general they have little impact. What does achieving value actually mean? Or world class? Very few mission statements have provided employees with an accurate description of what the organization does to support clarity. Lencioni states that leaders need to give their employees clarity by answering six critical questions. Number one, why do we exist? Employees in every organization and at every level need to know that at the heart of what they do lies something grand and aspirational. Without this, they are likely to operate in a reactive, unprincipled, and often inconsistent way. The purpose must identify the subject you serve. Is it the customer? Is it the industry, the community, or a greater cause? Is it for wealth? The leadership needs to decide and promote. Number two, how do we behave? The answer to this question is embodied in an organization's core values. More than anything else, it describes an organization's personality and identifies how its staff should behave without the need for strict line management. Core values must be focused. If they are too generic, they are too weak. They must define what the organization will tolerate. Lencioni puts this succinctly. If an organization tolerates everything, it stands for nothing. Number three. What do we do? This question is the simplest of the six, and if you can't answer it, then I hold no hope for your company. What is needed is a simple description of what you actually do. No adjectives, no abstract, just fact. Number four, how will we succeed? In answering this question, we are determining our strategy. The answer must be a collection of intentional decisions that a company makes to give itself the best chance to thrive and differentiate from competitors. By listing everything of imaginable importance to our business and then grouping these into collective sets, which Lencioni calls strategic anchors, we should be able to identify the three most critical actions or focuses of our strategy. Number five, what is most important right now? Most organizations have too many top priorities which stop them from achieving the best results. By focusing on too much, less is gained and staff are pulled in multiple directions. To create a sense of alignment and focus, an organization must have a single top priority within a given period of time. How can we identify the answer? Ask yourself, what must be true in X months from now for us to be able to look back and say with any credibility that we had a good period? And number six, who must do what? Every organization of any size needs division of labor. Without such clarity, the potential for politics and infighting is great. Members of the leadership team need to understand each other's roles and responsibilities. They must be comfortable asking questions about each other's work. Further, this needs to be clearly and concisely summarized and regularly referenced and reviewed. Lesson number four, over-communicating clarity. After clarity and alignment have been achieved, the key focus is communication. The key point is this. People will only believe what they're being told after they've heard it consistently over time. A leader calling out to an audience from a platform may stimulate in the immediate term, but it is unlikely that the message will stick unless it is heard in a variety of different situations and from different people. Much of what sticks in an organization is water cooler rumor. Leaders are advised to go out and tell true rumors using cascading communication. Cascading communication rolls the key messages down through the organization from the leadership team. It provides a great opportunity for employees to hear the same message from all parts, and the more we hear, the more we believe. What we must do, however, is to help communicators put the message into their own words, so our own messages must be clear and understandable. If not, we run the risk of corporate whispers and misalignment of activities. Lesson number five, reinforce clarity. 
In order to ensure that common alignment is embedded, we need to make sure it influences every human system in our organization. What is a human system? Human systems give an organization a structure for tying together its operations, culture, and management, even when leaders are not around to remind people. How we hire, how we fire, how we measure performance, how we reward performance, how we train, and how we compensate must all reflect the alignment framework. Here are a few examples. Hiring without clear and strict criteria for cultural fit hampers the potential for organizational success. When employees get the opportunity to hear leaders talk about why the organization exists and what behavioral values were used to select them during the hiring process, they can immediately see how they can contribute. Healthy organizations believe that performance management is about eliminating confusion. They realize their employees want to succeed in the best ways to give them clear directions. Finally, compensation and reward programs are designed to remind employees what is important and they are being rewarded for behaving in the expected way. In conclusion, the power of organizational health is undeniable yet untapped. Early adopters will reap the advantages and create even greater differentiation from their competitors. Clarity and alignment. Are you in? Hi, I'm Rhonda, and this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!